Hey folks, it's Chibi Pirate here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the very first map submitted for the Co World Builders 2024 mapping competition. And I've taken a look already. This is actually the second take because the first take I didn't capture my cursor. Uh, but that's fine. It'll be a bit uh, shorter. And we'll just uh, take a look at the, the critique and I'll point out some things that are good. And then some things that uh, need some work. But um, yeah, I think uh, it's definitely not ready for kind of like serious play testing. But I think it'll be, you know, there's, it's some good things to, to point out for other map makers as well. Um, yeah, I don't, it's definitely not a bad map. It just, you know, there's some things that need to be changed and, you know, little things here and there but also uh, some big things too. So without further ado, let's get started. The first map is a one versus one map called Ansaldo Genova. And let's turn off Fog of War and the AI. So one thing that the map maker noted and that's pretty apparent right away is that the artwork isn't done. So, you know, we're gonna need more things breaking up the terrain and whatever. The water up here could be, it's definitely too fast. It is traversable, um, at least up here, but it just, it looks too, it looks too deep. Like I know you can see the rocks, but I think because it's so dark, it looks, it looks, yeah, like it looks like you're not really supposed to walk through it and it, it's going really fast. Um, these definitely need a, some kind of reinforcing because it, you know, you, they wouldn't be this narrow and just kind of be made of grass. Like, you want to put some kind of wall here. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah. So, another art thing to consider. Um, down here in the bottom, of course, this needs more tile work. The other thing is that these uh, railway tracks, they... In, in Co3, the splines don't work so well as in Co2, so... Uh, they don't work as well in terms of bending objects, so you get this with walls too, but but these segments don't really fit well together, and I think you're just going to have to find something else, because there's no way that you're going to be able to bend a spline with this railway, this railway uh, asset in this distance and have it not look just absolutely janky. Um, another thing in terms of art, I think the atmosphere might be a little bright. I see the lights are on, so it's like nighttime or dusk. Uh, so it might be a little blinding. Also, the out of boundary areas are not touched at all. Um, so, I, like I know the map maker did say that the art isn't done yet, but that's just another thing to consider. And then also reminding people to get rid of their little palettes of objects and textures out here. Um, in terms of gameplay, there's some issues with cover. So there's this heavy cover here provides cover to uh, a capturing squad. And it's also uh, giving you cover against the enemy base. So a lot of times on these safe points right outside the base, you don't really want this. If anything, you could have it the other way where you'd have some kind of cover over here only for the defending player. But even then, like, you think on Road to Tunis, right, the, the plus 10 feels right outside your base. You don't need the heavy cover because it's right outside your base, right? Um, biggest thing here with the base sectors, both of them, there is no shot blocking bar barrier that's like medium or heavy crush or anything even permanent crush. Um, plus, the machine guns don't even cover every way. So, you right now, you can just hop in. And then even if this was blocked off or covered with this building here you could just jump in the building with a flamethrower or anti-tank squad or satchel demolition squad and just destroy this then walk in so that's a big no-no another thing is these buildings are too close to the capture points so you can actually garrison the building and get in and uh and capture the point at the same time same thing here these points are too close they're literally overlapping here um, same thing up top, I think the points are too close together. And in the bottom here, especially with the high fuel, um, you know, kind of the hierarchy of points 
are the most important is either VP or fuel, and then the second most important is the other one. And then you have like probably munitions, maybe cutoffs are in there depending on the map. But you basically don't want to do this where you have, you know, I think of it in terms of like points of combat where in a competitive map, Will always talks about the, the center line and how you have the most engagement on that center line. But you bring players' attention to different parts of the map by having important points. So when you have a high field down here, that's great because you're making players come to the bottom of the map. But they're already coming to the bottom from that, of the map because you had the VP here. And um, so a good example of this cutoff here, this is a point that attracts players to this part of the map. Now, they're sort of already on the way here, so it isn't that important. Uh, kind of by itself but you know depending on how things go you'd see combat along a cutoff because that's another point that you're drawing the both players into because you know the cutoffs are important um lastly well maybe not lastly but in terms of resources and minimap uh structure so we i counted all the the points up and there it's a bit unconventional in that we've got high medium and low fuels uh that equal 51 so you see here we've got 10 fuel we've got five five another that's 20 another five fuel here 25 35 and then 45 plus 6 is 51 so we've got 51 fuel on a 2v2 a 1v1 map and the only map i've seen with more that with 50 from relic is monte cavo and that's a 4v4 map and both winterline and Mignano gap have 45 fuel so you know i do talk about this in this the style guide uh for, for your map you know it isn't the end of the world if you have 50 fuel on a 2v2 on a 1v1 map but it's definitely not conventional and and 40 is kind of the gold standard um but the way things go and the way this map plays out once it's kind of better tucked up maybe 50 fuel is fine but we'll just have to play it and see quick thing um you know this needs to be painted over and these little white spots there's one here as well or this this one here you just got to do a little territory painting retouching um yeah munition wise we're at it's like 82 or 81 munitions so it's like perfect right on and then there's five strategic points one two three four five so that's perfect but it's just about repositioning them uh, another thing, capture order. So this player's base capture order seems, I mean, as it is, it's okay where you're going out here to the fuel, you're coming out here to the cutoff, or you're coming down here for the resources. Whereas this player, you want to get this fuel, but this is acting as a cutoff. So you have to take this and then come here, or you have to have your second squad come to the cutoff or your first squad come to the cutoff and the second one takes fuel it's just this is like a pointless cutoff like there's no reason really for it to be there hey guys it's gp pirate coming to you from the editing room so the center line of the map is approximately over here this way but um these vps are not quite equidistantly spaced so the value from here to here is 100 but from player two to this VP it's like 160 and then from to the center point here from this player it's like 150 and from this player it's like a hundred and I don't know 20 it's it's like a 15 or 20 meter difference or something but it's not kind of the same as this star and I don't know if you know if you have one player where their safe VP is 25 meters closer than this other player's safe VP, then I don't know how balanced that is. It, when it's like 20, 25 meters, that is a bit of a, you know, it's a couple extra seconds of movement time. I don't know how big of a balance issue that'll be. Um, but something to keep in mind, this VP is about, it's it's not quite equidistant from each player, but it's a, a bit smaller, but it might be like a 15 meter difference. Um, the other thing is that this point here is a soft cutoff for the bottom. So this point is a hard cutoff. 
um, for either player actually. But but let's say if you're this player one and you're playing through the middle, you're playing the bottom half of the map, um, and you want to cut off this player's resources and they've got this bottom part, you can go straight for here, especially if you're playing in the middle somehow, you're pushing through, you get this, and assuming you're also going to take this point and cut them off, that's great. But um, it's not quite equal. And the other thing too is this, yeah, like I mentioned this fuel up here, this isn't connected directly, but this one is connected to the base, so it's a little, like I said, pointless cutoff, and it it's like non-symmetrical. Um, yeah, like, and I, I'm trying to see where this other cutoff is, y you know, like, they got a plus 16 munition connected to their base, and this player, like, this one isn't even connected, actually. Like, this, this point is actually this point's cutoff, although, you know, when you take this fuel, it, it connects, right? But so there's no, you know, where's their plus 16 fuel, right? Or plus 16 munitions. So it's not quite equal. And then especially these points getting closer to the this middle area, you know, th this is a lot harder to keep for player one as compared to this point for player two. So you've got to definitely move things around. But I see what you're doing. I see this kind of center line through the map kind of more or less here. And you're trying to make a bit of a bias VP and may maybe just bringing the different distances in by 10 meters um you know either making this one like 10 meters this way maybe this one making it 10 meters this way as well whatever um yeah it's not quite you know it doesn't have to be perfectly symmetrical perfectly balanced but it's a little far off that i think it'll definitely impact gameplay i know you've kind of designed the the map maker has kind of designed these individual blocks um with these points in mind but we might just have because it is a small map we might just have too many points um yeah another thing is that these hangers are very fragile and you can't see through them when they're intact but once they're destroyed like with the bombing run or, or artillery you can see through them so i, th I you can also drive and and you know move soldiers through here so i think it's a bit um you know there's a few structures like this it's a bit unconventional i don't really see the they also give heavy cover to squads like if we put our camera down here we just have permanent heavy cover kind of it's a bit inconsistent but when you have the squad base heavy cover where it's based on models in a squad, not individual models of who gets light or heavy cover. Uh, these kind of neutral points every so often won't really impact it. But uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, you know, maybe you could have, you know, three or four of these at most. But I, I feel like this wouldn't be a fun thing to play around or against because I'll just demonstrate real quick. It does block line of sight does give heavy cover but let's say we do a little bombing run and uh, let's, let's do like the carpet bombing run here okay so let's see it's funny okay so we'll get uh Vision here once these are wrecked. Just gotta get these guys out of the way first. Yeah, so now, as you can see, we can now see out of the hangar. But these are permanent blockers, so they're basically restricting movement, and they might even be they might be restricting shots, like attack ground shots. Um Let's get this AT gun here. Come on, do your thing. Alright. Yeah, so they're... It's blocking... Attack ground shots. So that, that also means that any shot that misses but scatters that might hit, won't hit because of this. It, you know, so it's blocking shots. It's blocking movement but it's not blocking sight on, and it's so long and it 
you know, I don't think the, the textures are kind of, they're complete, but it's, it just looks kind of very shiny. I, I just think that uh, maybe with better ground texturing, it would make sense. I know they're supposed to be hangers for aircraft, so I, I don't know. I feel like you just have to have something else here. And um, there aren't that many kind of permanent blockers either. So I think, oh, that's interesting. You can garrison the train car. Yeah, I think the locomotive might be a permanent blocker and the train cars maybe too, but like buildings you can permanently destroy, right? So at the end of the match, if you have a really close one, you know, you might, you know, maybe the cranes are left intact and maybe these big oil things, but all these buildings, you know, with enough explosives, you're just going to have a very flat map with very few site blockers and... In, yeah, it. I feel like you could definitely incorporate some elevation into here. You'd have kind of those retaining walls that would be uh, those big kind of stone walls that, that block movement in, in sight once you get close enough. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it, it needs a lot of work, and I think part of that is gameplay work, but a lot of it is just kind of basics, like not having your building so close to the points, not having the points overlap or be so close together like the middle or the VPs here or the south. Another thing, having the green cover on the points. Oh, and I almost forgot. So this is a rule for all map makers. Uh, you basically can't have tanks, neutral or destroyed tanks on your map. Uh, these all, even though you select them and nothing happens, if you attack ground and destroy them, and you have one of the salvage vehicles, you can get resources or actually just repair the tank and use the tank. So uh, another downside from Co3, uh, between Co2 and Co3, is that uh, we only have one model of a ruined tank that you can use for cover and to give flavors for your map that won't impact gameplay and, and balance. So yeah, like I said, all these tanks, you literally just take an anti-tank gun and attack ground. You bring your M31 or your your DAC half tracking, just get a fleet of tanks waiting for you, uh, kind of close to your base. So it's, yeah, definitely something to change and to get rid of and, and everything else. But can we, okay, we can move through these gates. That's interesting. Looks like it really block, restricts movement though. So this might be another thing to get rid of. Look at the path map and take out these gates. Um, yeah. That's kind of it. I mean, there's a lot, but I think you need a lot of, there needs to be a lot of changes first before we can really dig into kind of cover placement and flow. You know, I like that you've thought of, you know, having these different entryways into this bottom portion of the map, but I think you could even, you know, you could even build a three meter high terrain difference and have like a permanent wall here. Um, I don't know, something to kind of, you don't have to incorporate height, but um, you definitely want some kind of shot blockers, even if they're, instead of these like metal walls, even if they're like a uh, stone or, or like not rock, but like a, uh, yeah, a stone wall, some kind of stone security wall here, uh, just to serve kind of like as a hedgerow, ones that are, they're medium crushed. So within the first 10 minutes of the game, they'll be relatively permanent, but afterwards they'll get crushed and then also have some kind of permanent uh uncrushable site blocking features i think that could go a long way now it's not super necessary i mean road to tunis doesn't have any permanent site blockers i don't think i mean you've got the buildings and the walls or the high walls in that central compound but especially with a map like this it might be something to consider um especially these buildings here you know you can kind of negate their usefulness by putting a big wall here around this this edge so then you can't just garrison this building and and kind of easily hem the enemy into their base so yeah definitely overuse of buildings uh cover um you know i'll put a little summary in the description that's easier than trying to kind of do this all on the fly a lot of a lot of things to work on but there's there's some good meat here and you can i can tell the map maker was definitely thought of what to do uh, one last thing, don't do this. You can just pick this up and get a free LEIG. We don't really want to give the player free stuff. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, to the map maker of this map, 
I don't. I hope I wasn't too harsh, and I hope you you know reintegrate uh, some of these changes and uh, make the map you know a bit more complete in the art department, and then a bit more balanced in some things. And then once we've got a bit more of a solid layout planned out, we can kind of work through and and work on the little things like cover placement and and all that stuff. So in the meantime, um, thanks for watching. If you're a map maker and you have any questions, whether it's for this competition or not. Uh, you know, drop a comment in the comments, or if not, just join the World Builders Discord, and we can all help you out there. Thanks. Take care.